We filmed a lot of boats at the Cam Boat Show this week, but few have been as hard to get on as this, the new flagship of the Marex range, the 440 Gourmet Cruiser. It's the biggest Marex they've ever made. It's also the most expensive, 1.2 million euros for this boat to show spec, but that doesn't seem to be putting people off. They've sold seven of them already. So let's get on board and see what everyone likes so much, shall we? I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Life. Right, let's get going, because this is a relatively small boat by CAN standards, but my God, is there a lot to show you. We're gonna start here with the platform because it's a really nice design. It's got built-in chocks for the dinghy, and they're a very simple mechanism that just pop up like this. You've got them both ends, and then you can fit a Williams 385 on here, and it will sink down to the water and float off. Talking down to the water, you've got a button down here, and as it drops down, it extends out, and you can see here a staircase that's built in, so you get this nice shallow stairway in and out of the water. Storage, excellent. Big voids on either side for the fenders. You've got this big void here as well. This is made for wet kit, ropes, fenders, clothes you've been wearing, anything like that that's wet, it goes in there, not into the boat, and it all drains off, and you can see the quality of the teak. It's teak outside and ash inside on this boat very very high quality stuff and there's a really neat bit of innovation inside this locker as well whereby the shore power socket is on a reel you pull it out and you put it into the shore power and then when you take it off it reels back in so instead of either leaving the shore power cable behind or taking the whole thing with you every time it's just kept in the boat and then reels out to the shore power socket again really really smart thinking we're gonna head straight into the cockpit we'll look around the decks later on but I just want to show you how all of this fits together because it's such an important part of the boat this huge seating area here a lovely teak table that opens out and joins over into this area just a simple lift mechanism and obviously it joins that bench really nicely this also drops down to the level of the seats and you can fill it in with cushions to make a massive sun pad back here there's really good storage underneath all of these and it's very easy to access you just lift the lid gas rams, no moving cushions off, anything like that. It's really simple and really effective. Engine room access beneath my feet. We'll have a look at that later on. And of course, that crucial Marex edition, which is the full wraparound covers. They stow in these sides here. You pull them around like curtains, join them in the middle, and this area is enclosed within about 30 seconds. We've seen it before. At this scale, it still works really well. Twin manual sunroofs, one here, one in there. You can pull this back and get the sun in here, but then again, within seconds, you can cover it up. What I have noticed is a little bit of a lack of spotlights. You've got some LEDs here, but it doesn't look like to be super bright lighting out here. So you'd have to see what it's like at night. This is hull number one, technically a prototype. So I'm sure there's lots of little changes all over the place, but it still feels an amazingly solid package for hull number one. Moving inside. These doors slide in two, and then you have at the touch of a button, a drop down window, a very slow drop down window, but at least it's one touch on the way down, so it goes all the way down. And then eventually, when it gets to the bottom, this will flip over to create a bar area over here. Bit of horniness at the Can Boat Show. Now this is the Gourmet Cruiser version. You can also have a Scandinavia version. The Scandinavia version is all seating in here, which you'd argue, do you really need? You've got so much seating out there and it's so easy to enclose it. That feels like a lot of seating. I think the galley for a liverboard, people want to be on this boat for a long time, works really well. If you have the seating in here, you just have this part of the galley. But on the Gourmet Cruiser, look at the size of this on a 44 foot boat. It's absolutely huge. And the amount of cooling space is really impressive. There isn't a room to have a domestic size fridge freezer, but you've got two really deep chest freezers, fridge freezer here. You've got a cooler here built into the worktop and you've got another fridge down here where you've got plenty of space for more cold storage. And all of those run off the solar panel on the roof. So even if you're disconnected from shore power, you didn't want to run at the generator, you know that your cold stores are going to stay cold. Big double sink here, induction cooking. You can have gas if you want, but if you've got the generator, then induction cooking makes sense. You've got an oven down here and just loads and loads of storage. Draw storage here, draw storage here draw storage here. It's a relatively small boat, but it is designed to live on and there's lots of space to have your belongings on board this boat. Moving forward, 
I mentioned the sunroof, got the hard sunroof here, fabric sunroof there, and then you've got four forward facing seats, which is really valuable for navigation. And there are some really clever touches going on here. So this is a natural place where you'll sit facing forward on passage, but it also becomes a sort of relaxing space when you're socializing, someone's in the galley, people are out there, you can still communicate with the rest of the boat. And then here, you've got this nice slab of teak, but you've also got these little supports so you can create a little table here. Somewhere you can have some, uh, you know, hold some drinks, you could put your laptop here. It's a really clever use of space and just adds a little bit more to this area. Typical clever thinking from Marex. I mean, the boat is absolutely peppered with it. And here's a great example of that. If I go over to the helm seat, you see this gap here? They've designed that specifically so that you can sit up here with your back against this backrest and put your legs through here so you can sit with your feet up. Great stuff. More clever thinking at the helm position. This is a really nice position. Naturally it is, but you've also got adjustment. Push button adjustment on the wheel so I can bring this right towards me. Keeps on going, keeps on going. And then look at that, that's such a good seated position. Wheel really close, throttles here under my hand. Joystick, this is the IPS version. You've got stern drives and a shaft drive option as well. IPS 650 has proved the most popular, 480 horsepower per side, 37 knots. So, you know, performance is pretty good as well. But yeah, this is a fabulous position. And if you want to stand, you have an adjustable step here that you can adjust the height of when you order it to suit your height. And then the seat bolster, and you can stand and just peer out through the sunroof if you want to get a better view out. But the seated position is really good. A final bit of innovation here at the helm, the anchor camera. They've got an enclosed anchor locker here. You've got your ultramarine anchor fitted to this boat. When you put the anchor down, you can see the entire process happening on the camera. So you can remotely check the status of the anchor. You no longer have to have somebody up on the bow shouting back to you controlling the anchor, you can do it all from the comfort of the helm position and you can check visually that the anchor is in and home and safe. Works absolutely brilliantly. And because the camera's inside, it's not gonna get covered in spray or muck, the camera should always be clear. Very, very smart. Another key feature to mention is that they've added the number of side doors. You have this on the smaller boats, but they've added this one as well, so the helmsman doesn't have to move out the way when people want to get onto the side deck. So having them both sides, really useful. Heading downstairs, there are two and three cabin arrangements on this boat. This boat's got the three cabin arrangement. If you have the two cabin one, you get a full beam, a midships guest cabin with a much bigger bathroom. Here you have separate cabins, double this side, twin this side, and they share the day head here. They're good sizes though, you've got a good double bed in this one. They thought about having hang storage and somewhere to sit so you can put shoes and socks on. This one has a sofa in it, the idea being that sort of kids can go down there, they can relax, you know, be on the tablet, look out the window, have their own space. But you could have another bed down there. I believe it also converts to a bed in this guy. So plenty of sleeping options depending on how you want to use the boat. Moving forward, we're into the owner's cabin. And this is a great space, you really notice the use of glass or smoke glass in the doors here. It means you don't have big slabs of timber darkening the place up. Natural light can still seep through. It looks really classy as well. And there's a lovely feel to the walnut cabinetry. I said you've got ash underfoot. It all feels typically high quality, what we've come to expect with Marex. Good levels of natural light down here. They've got some skylights overhead drawing down natural light. You've got a decent level of hull window as well. And this cabin has got an ensuite and it's a good size. You've got a separate shower cubicle as well. You can partition it off when you're showering so that the toilet and the sink don't get wet. Again, it's really, really smart thinking. That's the accommodation. Let's head back onto deck and have a look at the side decks and foredeck. I'll move on to the side deck from the side door. Of course, it's very easy to access this area from the side decks of the bathing platform. But as I said, this is a nice function, the fact that you can come out from this side door here. Really nice side decks, good size tow rails. As I said, the teak, incredibly high quality. It's, it's absolutely covered in teak and it does look lovely. This boat's got the solar panel option that like I mentioned. They're just fitted on top of the hard top there and it's a hard hard top there and a soft hard top aft. And then you have your sunbathing space forward here more lovely teak detailing. And you can see you've got pop-up backrests here so that you can sit up and have a slightly more comfortable ride if you're, if you're up here and not moving along too quickly. And there's some more clever stuff right here at the bow. So this is a really big anchor hatch that pops up and then the bow spirit actually extends out. The idea being 
they can hopefully save you a bit of money in a marina so you can reduce the length of the boat when you come to discussing your marina fees and actually even though it's a fully enclosed anchor you've still got really good access to it through this hatch if you do need to do any maintenance that should be pretty easy talking maintenance let's go and have a look at the engine room engine room access through a hatch in the cockpit and you realize how good the insulation is the generator has been running the whole time i've only just noticed that when i've lifted that hatch They've even built in a step on top of the engine, so because it's what everyone does. They step on top of the engine, they've got a little plate here, so you can do that. There's also a ladder. And then you're down and in. Now, headroom isn't great over the engines. This one's pretty good, but the port side one, you really have got to clamber over it. But it's a very wide space and incredibly neatly engineered. It's very easy to see where everything is and get to everything and check things, but you know, headroom isn't great. Now, what you don't have is easy access if you want to lift this out. You can lift the deck out, but it doesn't have a powering option. It doesn't lift up as a hatch. You have to physically remove the whole thing if you have to do something like take the port side engine out. Hopefully you never have to do that. The day-to-day -day checks and access down here is really pretty good. It's just a bit cramped once you're over the port side engine. Thank you very much for watching that whistle stop tour of the Marix 440. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see a full sea trial of his little sister, the 330 Scandinavia, we tested that in the UK and you can watch that if you click up here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, please click up here. Thanks for watching.